Hey, and welcome to episode number 17 of Sticks and Stones. I'm uh, Sue. I'm Julia. Today on episode 17 of Sticks and Stones, we will be doing a DIY project on Mod Podging, mm -hmm. specifically beads, I believe. And Julia will show us all the things that she's been knitting away at for Christmas and otherwise. Sue's going to show you some new jewelry projects that she created, plus some paper crafts she's been working on with her big old dictionary. Join us! All right, here we are, episode 17. Yes. Plug it along. Yes. And surprisingly, we've gotten stuff done over the Thanksgiving holiday, and we're, uh, we're still... We'll still here. Still here. Still here. Still feeling crafty, so that's good. So. Oh yeah, this is crafty time of year. <laughs> Much to do. Yes. Hopefully you guys are crafting away with us. That'd be kind of fun. Yes. So, do you want to go first today, or shall I? Um, I'll go first. All right. Um, what have I been working on? That's well, a good question. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of repairs. Um, you know, I feel like um, being a jewel, being working in beads and being a jewelry artist is sort of like owning a pickup truck. If you own a pickup truck, everyone asks you to move them. Mm -hmm. If you're a jewelry artist, everyone asks you to fix their stuff. Yes. Which is fine. It's fun. Um, so I fixed these bracelets recently for people, and uh, this one was a challenge because I didn't know the pattern, so mm -hmm. I just winged it. But um, you know, it's just strung on. Um, it's strung on some bead on and then it has some oh. crimp beads, stuff that we've done in previous episodes. So I finished those up. I also had another, my neighbor um, had a, a necklace, a pearl necklace that she had shortened. And so there was some pearl left over. And she also had a Tiffany bracelet that Ooh. broke and it had um, these little tiny uh, silver beads on it. So she asked me to remake those things into something else, which is always fun. So we sat down one night with her bag of, of uh, different random things she had that were broken. And so wow. I made these real simple ones that she's going to give to her daughters. Those are really pretty. And then these that I kind of modeled on a pair of earrings she had. Hers were made in turquoise, but she said she really liked them and she mm -hmm. had lost one. So I did the silver little um, beads and then the pearl at the bottom. And they're pretty cool. Yeah, those are really nice. And then she had a, a jade necklace that also broke. So I made these earrings. And I'm going to be making a necklace that matches, actually, somewhat. Oh, wow. So... You've been busy. That's what I've done jewelry-wise. Um, other than that, though, I've been um, I was seriously hit by the Christmas stick. <laughs> um, you know, some years it's like, really, we have to put up this tree, like, really? Oh, decorations, yeah. This, And then other years it's like, woohoo, Christmas! <laughs> and this, this is one of the years. As you can see, I made a gallery behind us of all the little art pieces that... Uh, my kids have made over the years, and I actually have some hung up from when I was a kid that I made in elementary school. Wow, that paper hasn't disintegrated yet? No, surprisingly. <laughs> it's not that old. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and um, I had the kids make uh, pomander balls. Yes. This is mine that I made quite a long time ago, and it still smells a little bit. Mm, just, I love that. Just love barely it, it. you can smell it, but this one's probably like... I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's 10 years old. Oh, wow. You know, and uh, it's cool looking. It's so hard. Yeah. And so the kids made these. Um, my daughter made, I don't know if you can see this, there's like a tiger and <laughs> a fox. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, let's pause. Here's the boy. <laughs> Yeah, we're here in my living room and my dog's right next door, so he's <laughs> keeping guard. Um, but my kids made these pomander, and so there's little, my daughter made one with little faces. One's a tiger, oh, one's a fox, and I think one's a squirrel, which I never in a million years would have thought of making. Because, no. you know, I always make mine like decorative geometric designs, but this one's, this one's pretty old. So I thought it was time to make new ones. And it's actually surprisingly easy for kids. I took metal skewers. I gave them metal skewers so they poked the holes in the orange with the metal skewers and then just stuck the cloves yeah, in. Yeah, because those cloves can get, can hurt after a while if you're just shoving them yeah, in. Yeah, it's actually, it's kind of hard to do. I think it's hard to do to shove them in, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, so we, we use the metal skewers to make a hole. Um, and uh, I made some chai. I've been like cooking up a storm. We've been drinking our chai. Cheers. And homemade chai. <laughs> and actually what I did with that was when I was done, I took all the spices that were in the chai 
And I've just been keeping this in a pot on my stove and mm -hmm. I turn on low. You can smell it still. This oh, is about yeah. four days old. Nice. And I like strain it every once in a while, get rid of the water and just I took some of the peppercorns out because I thought it was too peppery and I put some allspice in and I added some uh, orange peel. Mm. And so I just simmer it on my stove and it makes the whole house really smell nice. like Christmas. Yeah. So there's that and we've been doing some paper crafts like Moravian stars and snowflakes. The Moravian star I didn't I didn't realize until I moved here that this is a this is a local thing. The Moravian started here um, in the Lehigh Valley. So that was kind of neat once I realized that's what these stars were from, that that's the kind of star they that yeah. they use. Mm -hmm. I don't know the history of it exactly, but they're beautiful stars. They are. And they're actually not that hard to make. Mm. You, they have places here, stores, you can go and you can buy a kit that gives you the paper strips. And the paper strips are really just, you just have to cut strips the same length. But it looks a lot harder than it is. Yeah. It's just a lot of folding. It uh, Honestly, except for this last part where you make these stick up, the rest of it is almost like, remember in, in elementary school when you pass notes yes. and you fold them up? Like yeah, that. it's like Neat. that. And the other thing that we did is this paper star that Julia and I made. After the last episode, we were, we were trying it because um, I wanted to use my dictionary. And so I found this really cool star. It's yeah. actually eight pieces that you put together. But the fun part wasn't really <laughs> making the star. The fun part was when I found it. I found it on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And the directions were in Norwegian. I didn't realize it at first. And, I, and then I was like, oh, I can't really understand this language. And Google automatically put up this thing that will translate it to English. Yeah. And I thought, no, I'll just try and look at the pictures. But I couldn't. So we translated it. And some of the translations didn't come through. Oh I can gosh. see why, like, I know someone who's a, um, a professor of Spanish, and she's like, yeah, Google Translator. Like, no, some things just don't translate. <laughs> what we are were, some of our favorites? Oh my gosh, we were laughing so hard. Uh, let's see if I can find one here. The one about Brett. Brett was Brett. in this a lot. I don't know why, but Brett apparently had a splin slainer or something like that. Brett sides Spisane along the center line. And then Brett in the new side of Spain along the center line. <laughs> Luckily, there's enough English words and yes. pictures to actually be able to do this. But what's, I think what's our favorite one? Our favorite one is there's a nice little picture of a triangle and it says, Does it look like now? When one has found links are, it is very easy. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting there feeling like we're in some like quest to find links are. We did, oh we did find Lingzar because we were able to make the star. And then you're supposed to pull back to the start, it says. And finally, uh, we were cracking up about this part too. When all the parts are put together, you begin to tighten. It <laughs> makes you to gently pull the ends. As simple as that, no rules. I myself to see how the stars are hearts. <laughs> So we had a lot of fun reading Mary that. Merry Christmas! <laughs> I see the stars are hearts. Oh, but it makes so. a really cool looking star. It is. It's a cool star. Handle the Norwegian Actually, translation. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> there's enough There's enough English to be able to help you through. Yeah. So uh, I suppose this is probably in some other language besides Norwegian, but that was how we found it. Yeah. So that was fun. It was really cool though. It's yeah. a neat looking star. It is. It is. So um, what have you been doing? Oh, I've been busy. I've been making little owls. These are kind of fun. This is a like a little uh, keychain or a bag owl. Oh, this is so cute. And ah, these would look so cute all over a Christmas tree. Oh, that would be really like cute. a little tiny that. one. That's the one my daughter wants me to make her. A little she bugs me like every Christmas day. tree here. This is a, a tea bag cozy that looks like a little owl. With his fun. nose folds down on it there, and you put your little tea bag inside. So. That was really cute. So for like if you're one of those people that takes your own tea bag to a restaurant. Yeah, yeah, or to work or something, you can put them in the little cozy. I like this guy, he's so cute. Um, and then I have been, I've been spinning again. I actually dyed this myself, kettle dyed in my crock pot with my Wilton. Nice. I and love the colors on this. It's so gorgeous. Yeah, it turned out green and blue. I hoped it to be a little more blue, but um, the green is really neat. It turned it out is. really bright. And the funny thing was, is I had some extra. This is a two ply that I just did uh, barber pole. It's my mom. Um, I don't think she watches this, and I hope not. But she sings in a barbershop quartet, so I thought kind of the the barber pole oh, thing okay. would be neat for her. But I did the rest in a three ply. Look at the difference in how the yarns look. Yeah. Two ply versus three ply. It's the exact same yarn. That's crazy. So yeah. So what color did you use to dye this? Because you said you were hoping it would be more blue. Well, what I tried to do is I I put the whole thing in. 
except for one end I left hanging out in a, a green, a bright green. Um, and then I took all that out, turned it around, and put it all back in with blue. So that the one end would be solid blue and one end would be solid green, and then they would kind of meet in the middle. Yeah, kind of blend in the middle. Um, the blue actually is, it's a nice dark blue, but I don't think I left enough wool. I think I should have left more if I wanted it to be more blue. Mm. Instead I had more green. I, I did the green first. And so then I took the whole thing and plunked it all back in except for like maybe a little bit of green and did a little more blue on top of that to kind of model it, which is where I got some of these other, like the forest green there. Yes. Is because the blue was going on top of the green. I think it's gorgeous. So Thank you. What are you going to make with it? I'm not. I'm not. It's a gift. Oh, you're going to give it to her like that? Yes. You're not making no, it into No, I'm not going to make it into anything. I'm oh, okay. just making the yarn um, so that they can do what they want. Nice. So, yeah, so that's that's what I did with that. And then I've been making shawls. I finished up my Multnomah. You guys haven't seen this yet. I've been working on it in the slack. <gasps> so, How this, dare you not tell us? Yeah, see, this is what happens when we go two weeks in between. I, I can work on stuff. But this was kind of my Thanksgiving shawl. I worked on it a lot over break. It's well, cranberry. Yeah, actually it is. Is that why it's Thanksgiving? No, it's, it's just cranberry happening. sauce. I was just that's what you should call it. Cranberry, cranberry sauce. sauce. But I love it. It turned out really nice. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Um, so that's my Maltinoma. And then there's this one that I, this is, I didn't show you, but this is what I worked on during the hurricane. Um, this is the springtime bandit pattern, but I'm calling it autumn bandit because it's yellow. You should call it hurricane. Hurricane. <laughs> You're so straightforward. <laughs> So, but that's the, I finished those two. Um, and do you, do you remember later when you wear it? Like when I'm working yeah. on something and I'm like watching a TV show or a specific movie, every time I put that on, yeah, it flashes. Like, yeah, I'll remember doing that. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, so it's kind of fun for me to be like, oh yeah, this is my hurricane yeah. one. And See, this is that's my... the hurricane one. Yeah, but I don't want to call it that because it's like a hurricane. I don't know. Anyway. I have you could call it after the storm. storm. <laughs> <laughs> What's your exciting That's much news? much more whimsical. <laughs> My exciting news. I have new patterns. I am, releasing, I am releasing this pattern this week. This is a sock pattern. It's called Fibasaki. <laughs> and any it. of you math geeks out there will get it. The, the uh, reason it's Fibasaki is because yeah, there's a so. stripe pattern of slip stitches that... Um, increases in the Fibonacci sequence. Oh yeah, so. me and Fibby. <laughs> it will be explained in the pattern, but it makes a really neat... Like, oh, it will be revealed! <laughs> <laughs> it makes oh a gosh, really neat look at it. kicking in. Yeah. No, it's really beautiful. And it can be done, this one's obviously a self-striping, but it could be done in a variegated too, I think. And I made mine a short cuff, but you can make it a longer cuff too. Um, so, look for this. This is going to be a pattern in my um, Ravelry downloads. Nice. Um, so that'll be up in the next couple days. And there is another pattern that I didn't get to show you guys because I had to give the monster away, but I made a little monster called the Zombie Knitster. And it is truly a weird looking little creature. He's but really cool though. Yeah, he's, he, it was pretty cute. Um, you can The fun thing about it is that the hands are made to stick a knitting needle through so it can hold a little swatch and knit with you. And I'll, I mean, his eyes are really funny, but that's that is also on my Ravelry downloads page. It's under the store We Sheep Knits, and you can get to it also through my profile. So um, I just wanted to share that with you. I love it when I get to actually finish something and release it and get it out there, and hope that everybody else loves it as much yeah, as I do. Yeah, so it's exciting. And yeah. people have been buying the monster, and they love it. Yeah, the monster, and actually the flip top mitts. Um, have been going pretty well too for Christmas. That's a really quick and easy project for little hands. Um, flip top, ch flip toppers, children's mitts is what they're called. So that that's also there. Yeah. So take a look. Take like a look. how? What's the price range on your patterns? Four dollars, four or five dollars. Okay. So not a whole lot. I don't want to break the bank. I just want to. Um, I just want to get him out there, you know, mm -hmm. share share the fun I've had. So uh, all right, and I just wanted to show you guys my little square that I finished. This is the completed square, no longer a triangle. From oh right, our, our last, last triangle. Yeah, our last our, our our November square long, 
We're going to take a break in December because I know how busy everybody is. Mm -hmm. So we'll pick back up on our square alongs in January and uh, give you guys a chance to do whatever crafting you need to do. So. Yeah. And so feel free to share it with us on our WordPress site, sticksandstones.wordpress.com, yep. or our Ravelry group, which is also Sticks and Stones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so now we're off to our DIY. Yeah. We're going to Mod Podge. Woohoo! Make a little mess. See you in a minute. For today's DIY, we're going to be using some Mod Podge to create some tile beads that you can use to make bracelets or necklaces or earrings or stitch markers or whatever you would like. So what you're going to need is some scissors, some um, tile beads. These have a hole that runs up the center, um, some scrapbooking paper scraps, a foam brush and some kind of Mod Podge. This is the brand name but you could also get generic and that would be fine. This is also the gloss version instead of the matte. So what you're going to do is choose, first of all choose your paper. I chose this one with a little bit of purple onyx. I thought it looked really nice with the color bead. And you can use a pencil and trace the tile but I just kind of freehand cut it. I wanted it to be slightly smaller than the tile so that you could still see the translucent edge around. Um, so I'm just gonna cut out a little square here and then we'll measure it as we go. So I'll take a look now and measure it on my tile. I think it's a tiny bit big, so I'm just going to cut off a little bit of the bottom. This is really very personal. It's however you want it to look. It doesn't really matter um, as long as you're happy with it. So now I have a little square here, and I'm going to Mod Podge it on. You don't need a whole lot of Mod Podge to make this stick, but what you'll do is just put a drop or two on top of the tile. Sorry if my arm's getting in the way. This is a adhesive and also a varnish. So you just brush it onto the top of the tile. And the fun thing about Mod Podge is that you can really use it on a lot of mediums. So just brush a nice layer on there until it seems to be pretty thick and then stick your paper on the tile and it'll stick pretty well. You can move it around for a few seconds. Then when you're done, you put another drop or two on top and brush it on. And what this will do is seal the paper and will also give it a really nice shine. Then you just let it dry. And when you're finished, it'll look like this. It's got a little bit of a shine to it. You can put more than one coat on top if you prefer to have it be shinier. Um, and then the back, I left it plain, but if you wanted to, you could put something different on the back side too. So that's all there is to it, and you can have a lot of fun. We can do things like this, where you put the picture on the back, and it shows through the glass. That's kind of a fun look. Um, or you could wrap an entire bead or um, something like that instead of just the top. So um, have some fun with this and uh, we'll be back in a second to show you some other ideas. So we're back and um, we're just going to be playing around a little bit with the Mod Podge and some other things. Um, Sue tried something a little different than I did. I did. Where did my beads go? Oh, they're right here. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I actually, um, I used Elmer's glue and I just um, added water to it to, to make it a little thinner. So, you know, I did a quick search on the internet and most people said three parts glue to one part water. Yeah, that's fine. I just winged it, put some water in the cup, <laughs> put as much glue as would come out and uh, stirred it up in the cup. And it is, it's much, uh, it's much um, thinner. And then I used some wooden beads and I, I glued pieces of map onto them. And so they're fun. They have different numbers on them. I think the difference between the Elmer's glue and the Mod Podge is that the Elmer's glue doesn't have the, uh, 
the shine to it mm -hmm. and the gloss that the Mod Podge does. The varnish. And, um, yeah, but this is great for kids to use because it washes out of your clothes. Right. Where the Mod Podge, I think, doesn't, right? If there is a kid's version, but it's quite a bit more expensive and you don't get as much, the, the jar is actually smaller than the um, okay. regular. So it's a little more cost effective to use the glue. I think it looks a little thicker to me. Yeah, I mean, you can always just thin it out and add more water. Um, I also found with the beads, I mean, because you're doing flat stuff. Right. So that's a little bit easier. When I was doing the beads, because they're round, you kind of have to smush it up around the edges. Mm -hmm. Um, which is fine. It just takes a little bit of work as you're working the Elmer's glue. If anybody who's used Elmer's glue, you know, it kind of ends up everything sticking to you. Right. You're sticking to it. But it wasn't bad. And um, I like it. I cut out the different number roots on this. Oh, fun. Yeah, so it's fun. Uh, this is South Berwick and Berwick and Route 4. So a couple of those would be fun to make a bracelet of that beads. Yeah. You know, uh, I saw some that used bigger beads and they cut out a specific place, which would be fun. That would be a really fun bracelet, like, for a trip. Yes, You know, to take be. maps and, and cut out the names of cities where you've stopped. Do you, we actually had a friend who asked us if it would be okay to Mod Podge to her wall, which I thought was a neat idea, but we were like, it probably will never come off. <laughs> and she said, well, I don't want it to come off, but <laughs> really, <laughs> as I said, you know, maybe you don't, but someone in the future may want it to come yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we might not recommend doing that, but uh, but it was a neat idea to put a map on a wall, too. Yeah. Um, so. I did try, just because I always have to bring it back to the fiber, I did try <laughs> to Mod Podge some yarn onto a circle um, to make it look like a little ball of yarn. And I'm it's still a little wet. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out yet. I'm really curious to see how it's going to be. But that if it works, I think it would be kind of a cool pendant or something like that. It's kind of a neat look. It's getting yeah. hard. It's not um, It's not soft yarn anymore. Um, so, you know, you play around with it to see what kind of things you can come up with. You don't have to use just paper. And you can use anything from a tissue, right? right, to Mod Podge on, to fabric, to... Yeah. You can Mod Podge I think, just about anything. That I also saw, I really want to try this, with my dictionary that I was talking about last mm -hmm. time. Um, is someone Mod Podge shoes? So I think it would be fun to do all the words and then put some dictionary pictures on it. I'm not sure what kind of shoes you would use though. If you need like vinyl ones, or I if you know. can use any kind, because I had a pair of leather shoes, but I think the Mod Podge would soak into the leather. So I wonder. That's interesting. I might have to try it, um, you know, in my free time. <laughs> uh, maybe that'll be my Christmas gift to myself. Is to make shoes. myself go buy a cheap pair of flats and make myself a pair of, of uh, shoes. Well, when you do that, you will have to model them for us. I, I would love to see it. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. So I don't think you can use Elmer's glue on those because, I mean, Elmer's glue is water soluble. Right. So if you got them wet, your shoes would come apart. That would be a problem. But the Mod Podge has varnish in it, right? Yes. So it stays forever and ever and ever. Yeah, it laminates. I found this too in my drawer. It's a puzzle saver that you can use on a jigsaw puzzle to keep the pieces from falling apart if you want to frame it or something. And it just says, it calls it a laminate. So um, I suppose that's kind of the similar thing for here. Water-based sealer, glue, and finish. So yeah, you can do all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. Show us what you do. I'd love to see it yes. every time. So all right, well, thanks for coming again. And um, hope you guys all had a very happy Thanksgiving. And we'll see you back here soon. See you later. Bye.